Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with propositional logic. And in particular, uh, I was trying to understand the rules associated with our natural deduction system. Uh, we're going to introduce, I suppose, uh, another two rules. Uh, and they've got to do with, I suppose, implication elimination. Okay, So we're interested in implication elimination. Implication elimination and there's going to be two forms of that uh, the first one is known as I suppose it's it's known as it's known as a uh, modus ponens okay modus ponens okay and uh, this is let's say this is this is Latin for uh, a mode that by affirming affirms is basically what that means and we we'll see we we'll see what we mean now in a moment yeah, when we have a look at this that's the first form of it uh, and then we have a second form of this implication of implication elimination elimination uh, which is which is elimination which is known as modus tonens uh, and in relation to it and in relation to modus tollens, uh, this has got to do with, I suppose, a mode that by denying denies. Okay, but let's have a look at the actual rules uh, that allow us to remove an implication when presented with an implication. Let's just keep in mind that an implication, an implication is of the form, uh, let's say, a implies c okay where a is what's known as the antecedent the antecedent of the argument and c is known as the consequent the consequent uh, of the argument uh, so if a then c that that particular statement is either true or false it's what's known as it's what's known as an implication okay? and in our natural deductive system and uh, uh, we're going to come across these implications and at times we might want to eliminate the implication from the argument so that we can separate out the antecedent and the consequent uh, from the actual argument itself and use them later on in our proofs uh, where we want to where we want to prove a particular a particular sequent uh, if that makes sense okay but anyway, the implication elimination modus ponens, uh, if basically the rule says this, it says that, I suppose, if we have, if we have in an argument, in our proof, if we've already, if we all, we've already assumed the truth of, let's say, of, of phi, okay, and if we already know the truth, uh, if we've developed the formula that phi implies psi, okay, so if that these two things are somewhere, even they could be the premises of uh, that are associated with the consequent, yeah, but they don't necessarily have to be the premises. They could have been developed. They could have been deduced from other premises. But if we know that phi is true. Uh, or the phi holds, and we know that phi implies psi, that this implication also holds, okay. Well, then what we can actually do is we can actually show then uh, that psi must hold. And this is known as implication elimination, and it's what's known as modus ponens, okay? This is the modus ponens rule, okay? Let's try to look at this in a little bit more detail. Maybe what we'll do is, so for this particular rule, okay, let's say, let's just look at this particular rule here, okay? Let's have a look at a true table and let's have a look at the consequence uh, of particular truth values associated with the implication. So let's say we have a true table for the implication. Let's say we have phi and we have psi and let's say the values are false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. And we have the implication phi implies psi. We know that an implication is only ever false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, or when the premise is true and the conclusion is false. It's only ever false here, everywhere else it's true. Okay? So let's let's explore the premises. Okay. So what we know is this is we know that the implication as a whole, the implication as a whole holds. So the implication is true. So the scenario that we must have is we're either in this particular case here, or we're in this particular case here over in this particular case here because they're the three places where the actual implication holds so in our proof in our natural deduction if we've shown if we've shown that phi implies psi well then one of three things must be the case okay but let's look at now these in a little bit more detail and let's examine them when phi is true okay so you can actually see out of the three possibilities yeah the only situation where phi is true is in this situation here okay it's it's right here is where phi is true 
Okay? So the only case that we have, or the only the only statement that we have, yeah, with respect to this particular implication, okay, that holds when phi is true and when the overall implication is true, is this last one here. And what we can actually see from that in that particular situation, we have the situation that psi is also true. Okay? So what we're saying here is this: is that if we know that the implication is true, in this situation the implication is true. If we also know that the, the, the antecedent or the premise of the argument is true, well then what we get for free is that psi in that case must also be true. So this allows us now to break to break an implication or to eliminate an implication within our deductive argument, okay? And actually to carry through the consequent from that particular from that particular uh, implication. Let's have a look at the other situation, okay? The other situation is implication in, with respect to implication elimination is what's known as modus tollens, yeah? Uh, and that's a little bit different. What that's saying is this, is that if, so let's have a look at the rule, okay? If we know that phi implies psi, if we know that that's true, and if we also know that the negation of psi is true, in other words, the negation of the consequent of the implication is true, well then what we can infer or what we can conclude is that the negation of the antecedent or the negation of the premise of the implication of, of, psi, of phi must also be true. And this is also implication elimination, but this version of it is what's known as a uh, modus tollens, okay? So you can actually see that in this situation we're bringing in the fact that the negation of the consequent is what's, is what's actually true. Let's have a look at that from a true table perspective. So from a true table perspective, what we have is we have, we have phi, we have psi, we're going to have phi implies psi, okay? Uh, we have the possibilities false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. The only time an implication is ever false is when the premise is true and the conclusion is false. So the only time it's ever false is there. Everywhere else it must be true. Okay. And let's see what we have. So once again, the situation that we have is that phi implies psi holds in the argument. Okay, so That appears somewhere in our deductive argument. Phi implies psi must be true. So we have three situations. It must be once again here, here, or here because they're the three places where the ar where where the argument itself overall is true. But what we also know is that the negation of psi, the negation of psi is actually holds. Yes, yeah? so the negation of psi must be true. So let's see the negation of psi. Okay, so here's psi. Psi is false. Its negation is true. So this is the situation here where the negation, okay, in this situation here we have the negation of the consequent of the argument is true. In this situation here, uh, psi is true. Its negation is false. So we don't have a holding there. And in this situation, psi is true. Its negation is false. So we don't have a holding here. So the only place where the two premises, okay, uh, within the overall in the overall argument hold, okay, is the first case here. And what we can actually see here is that in that particular case we have we have that phi is false. And so we must conclude that the negation of phi must actually be true. Okay? So just from a true table perspective, just so that you can actually see why we can why we can actually uh, eliminate the implication when when the when the antecedent is true and why we can eliminate the implication uh, when the consequent or the negation of the consequent is actually true. Uh, that they're 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 two of our rules. They're two of our important rules. Okay, let's have a look at an example of where we have a sequent and what we want to do is we want to prove the validity of the particular sequent. Okay? I'll just write down these two rules again, just really quickly, but a bit, bit in more compact form. Okay, So we have a uh, modus, modus ponens, uh, if phi is true, and if phi implies psi is true, well then we must have that psi is true. Okay, That's the first one. Okay, that's our implication uh, elimination and then the second version of it is um, if phi implies psi is true well then and the negation of the consequent is true well then what we can conclude is that the negation of the antecedent of the argument must also be true and this is called implication elimination as well okay uh, two different versions of it so there are two important rules so let me just put them in a box here okay there are two important rules for us. This is uh, modus 
uh, ponens, okay, and this is modus tollens. So this is modus ponens, and this is modus tollens. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at an example, okay, uh, where we have, excuse me, let's have a look at an example where we want to prove the validity of a sequence. So let's say we have something like this. We want to prove, prove the validity okay, of the following sequent, sequent, okay, and it is, let's say, <coughs> Let's say what we have is we have P implies P implies Q and we have that's a premise and we have P also uh, and what we want to develop from that is to show that Q is true okay so let's just develop this particular argument okay uh, so what we have is step one of the proof okay well we we need to get q q is locked up in this in this compound implication here so but what we know is that we know that p implies p implies q is true because that's listed as a premise of this sequence uh, so that's a premise so we know that that's true uh, so we have a situation where we have an implication is true okay that's good okay uh, but what we also know is uh, from the premise is that p is true that's from the premise also so in this situation what we now know is that we have an implication that's true and we have an antecedent of the implication is true so we have the antecedent of the implication here is true so hence the consequent of the implication must be true so step three is using modus ponens uh, implication elimination because we have the implication here is true and its premise is true, well then its conclusion must also be true. So we must have that P implies Q must be true. And that's uh, modus ponens being applied, MP being applied to, uh, let's say, our proof lines one and two, okay? We need to get Q out. But I think we can actually see now what's gonna happen again. Here's an implication that we've just deduced from the previous two uh, statements, okay? This implication. But we know that its premise, its antecedent is also it's true based off because it is a premise of the argument. So once again, modus ponens kicks in. We have the implication has been developed, it's true. Uh, we also know that the antecedent of the implication P is true, so hence Q must be true. So step four is that Q must be true. And once again, this is modus ponens, where we are applying uh, line three and line two, the implication and uh, the, 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 impl the, excuse me, the implication and the, the implication here, and also this, this other premise here, which is just, it's just this statement P, or the proposition P. Okay, which is exactly what we want to get to. Okay, so here's one example uh, of a of us deducing, yeah, okay, deducing a consequent, yeah. Uh, okay, let's have a look at another another example. Let's say we have something like this. Let's say we have uh, Q. Uh, let's say implies P implies R. Okay, and we have the negation of R is true, and we also have that Q is true, and what we want to argue is we want to deduce. Uh, that the negation of p is true so we'd like to develop this okay so let's start off our argument step one okay we need to get not p out okay we need so the place where p is p is wrapped up in this in this compound implication which we know is true because it's a premise so we have q implies p implies or it's true because it's a premise of the argument okay that's important okay oh but look we know also that q is true okay two that's important so q is true because it's a premise also and now what we have is we have an implication that's true and also its antecedent is true so modus ponens kicks in and hence we can actually infer that its consequent must be true and the consequent being p implies or so we have step three we have p implies or must be true okay so that's brilliant but what we want is we want the negation of p here yeah? to be true okay so this is modus ponens uh, and it's rule one and two being applied uh, together now what we can actually see is that the negation of or is true okay so we have an implication that's true and we have its consequent or the negation of its consequent is true from the premises yeah okay so there you go that's modus ponens 
Tollens, which says that if you have an implication that's true and it's consequent, the negation of it being true, well then you can imply or we can conclude that the negation of the antecedent must be true. So now what we have is we now know step four is we know that the negation of or is true because that's a premise. Okay? And now we have step five is we must have, yes, we must have that the negation of P must be true because that's modus tollens uh, using uh, step three and also step four where we have an implication that's true and we have the negation of the consequent of the implication is true so hence the negation of the antecedent must be true which is exactly what modus uh, tollens uh, tells us okay guys uh, there was two short proofs uh, where we have used uh, implication elimination to help us to deduce a particular proposition okay and um, so uh, once again guys uh, this is uh, or this is Jonathan Lambert uh, with the mathematics development and support service at the National College of Ireland and this was another video uh, in our short series of videos dealing with proposition logic and in particular the rules associated with the natural and natural deduction system okay I hope that this was intuitive and more importantly I hope that was helpful for you and thanks for watching okay bye bye